All right. So today we're going to be talking about um, a timeline for a rehab in a house. And recently on one of my uh, on one of my elite mentoring calls I do with my Fast Track, I call it Fast Track, my Fast Track students. Um, the question came up about your timeline. In other words, the proper order of how you rehab the house. And I just want to kind of touch on this a little bit. There's obviously you know a different timeline based on what you're doing to the house. But generally speaking, when you're going to go in and you're going to do a fairly extensive rehab, I'm talking kitchens, baths, carpet, floor, flooring, you know, that type of thing. There is a specific timeline that I like to follow that seems to work really well. And I just want to touch on that a little bit. So if I'm going to go in and I'm going to be gutting out a, uh, let's say kitchen and bath, and I'm doing wood floors, uh, paint, and maybe some, uh, maybe some mechanical upgrades like, um, you know, furnace, water heater, let's say I'm doing a roof and let's say I'm doing some exterior work, you know, that type of a rehab. First of all and foremost, my general rule with my contractors is if something could be getting done, it needs to be getting done right now. In other words, some things don't affect other things and there's no reason to delay. A good, a good example of this is your roof. If you're putting on a new roof, there's no reason to wait and do it later. Do the roof right now. It's not holding up anything else, right? Whereas gutters, if you're doing a roof and you're doing gutters, you don't want to do your gutters until after you do your roof because you're going to damage them when they're doing the roof, right? So gutters is something that would have to wait until after the roof. But you can be inside doing work while outside you're getting your roof done. It doesn't hold up anything. Does that make sense? So I always have that in mind. If it's something that can be done right now, I've got a budget for it, I'm planning on doing it, don't wait, get it done now. That's my first rule. My second rule is, or the second thing I look at doing is, on the day of closing, I wanna have my demo crew ready to go. On the day of closing, remember, time is money, especially if you're borrowing money to do your deal. Every day matters, every day matters, and you need stuff happening every single day. So first thing I do is, um, is I got my demo. And if, I, if it's an extensive demo, you know, my dumpster shows up, demo crew there. And when I do my demo on the inside, we're gonna rip out the entire bathroom and all the cabinets, any kind of carpet, anything in the basement, all your demo. You get it all done right now. And my demo, um, I don't mess around. Like in my bathroom, I tell them, rip it all out. Everything out of there. And I don't care if drywall comes with it. Don't try to save drywall when you're pulling tile out, you know, in your tub surround, if that's the case. So rip it all out of there. So they come in, they rip it all out. And then the very next day, like immediately after I bring in my electrician, my plumber and mechanical to do their rough. Now why then? The place is all tore up, there's holes in the wall. So before my electrical, before really before I start my demo, while it's under contract, but while I'm waiting to get to closing, what I do is I have my, my, uh, my kitchen cabinet contractor who's gonna set the cabinets. I have him come out and we do our measurements and our design on the kitchen because I wanna know exactly where my cabinets are, really what I'm looking at is my appliances because I may need to run a circuit for the microwave or the, or the dishwasher or the disposal or the refrigerator, any of my electrical in my kitchen, I wanna have done during, right after my, my demo um, before I come in and do drywall. So follow me here. We rip out all the cabinets, rip out the tile in the kitchen, the, the kitchen's gutted out. My electrician comes in then and he can then rough in run new circuits if he needs to on any of that before you come in and do your do your drywall repair and your tile right if you bring him in afterwards and he's got to cut holes to run a new line or something now you're now you're affecting your drywall so let me go through this again demo rip out my bathroom rip out my kitchen rip out anything else in the house that needs done all my demo is done roughs come in they can run the rough plumbing any kind of mechanical work that needs done on the rough side and your rough electrical. Then those guys are out of there. They don't come back till the very end on the final. And the final is fixtures. The final is, um, so if it's electrical, it's new plates and covers. It's the new lights. For plumbing, it's your faucets and all of that. Um, now the other thing I do during my demo, and I have my actually have my demo crew, this is part of their scope of work. I have them go to Home Depot and get the the tub and the shower valve. So everything's ripped out, walls are out, tiles out, everything's out. And the tub and the shower valve are there on site when the plumber shows up. I want him to show up, set the tub, set the valve, 
do any other kind of roughing he needs to do, and now he's done and out of there. Then the drywall guys can come in and do the green board where you're gonna have your tub surround and do any other drywall in the bathroom, drywall in the kitchen. I even have the drywall or go through the whole house and get it what I call paint ready. Any other kind of drywall repairs that need done or you know patching nail holes, any of that kind of stuff. And his job is to get it paint ready. So when the painter comes later, he's got he's ready to go. He's not having to do touch up on the drywall or fixing on the drywall. Okay, after my drywall is set, now I can really go gangbusters, right? I can get my tile guys in there. So tile comes in, they do all the tile in the kitchen and the bathrooms. Um, now I can get my wood floor guy in there. He can do the refinish on the floors. The way I do my wood floors is typically I'll have him come in and do one coat of stain and, um, and then come in and do a polyurethane, you know, a clear coat. And then I have him come back again at the very, then we paper it. So it's all papered to protect it. And then I have him come at the very end and do another coat. You know, so sometimes he'll do a light sand, another coat, and then it looks really nice and shiny and brand new at that point, because there's gonna be traffic on it. Um, and then I just can kind of go along with everything else that needs done. We, then we come in and we set the cabinets, set the vanity in the bathroom, set, and then once the vanity's set, we can come in and do our final, um, while well, I get my granite in. Uh, when you do your granite, they'll set the sink as well because they gotta have the sink there, so they typically will do the sink. So you pick your sink out, the granite guy will put the sink in, set the granite on the cabinets, and then now you can come in and do your finishes on your, on your trades. Um, what I do on my electrical is we take all the lights and we pull them out and hang them down. So they're all there, the old lights are all there, but they're off the wall, because you want your painter to come in and do all of the painting, and then when the electrician sets his new fixtures, plugs and switches, plate covers, new lights, I want that after my paint. I do not want paint on my brand new fixtures. That's the worst thing you could have happen. It looks terrible if you've got brand new light fixtures and there's paint on them. Now the painter could go around it and, and tape off everything, but I don't want that risk of him getting paint on anything. I want all my fixtures to go over, over new paint, right? And that's basically, you know, it. anything that can be done should be getting done. So if there's something going on in the basement or there's something going on, all your outside stuff, if you're doing painting outside or you're doing a garage repair, a roof, siding, windows, all of that can be going on independent of your other stuff that you're doing. That's the biggest thing you need to think about. Always think on your timeline two and three weeks out, especially today because contractors are really busy. So you've got to schedule everybody out. So I want to keep a tight timeline so that I'm not wasting time. So think ahead about everything you need. Think about your appliances. I buy my appliances from Home Depot, and so I'll order those you know, three weeks ahead of time because they take time for delivery and all of that. So that way I, I've got a good plan there. Um, one thing I'll suggest here, and this is just something that I've been doing recently, is Home Depot has gotten really, really competitive on their labor. I've been stunned at what they'll charge to come out and do stuff, like set new doors, um, like your exterior doors, you know, they'll come in and like, I think it's like $200 or $150 and they'll come in and not only will they deliver your appliances, but they'll hook them all up. And they'll, you know, that's awesome. They'll hook up your dishwasher, hook up your gas line to your stove and all of that. I mean, that's great. So think about Home Depot, always ask. The one challenge is scheduling. They, they do seem to be, takes longer and you gotta deal with, uh, deal with them on the phone or if you go down there, you know, that takes a little bit more time, but they're doing, they're, there's a lot of things they'll do, almost anything now they'll do on a rehab. And, uh, and their prices are actually pretty good if you shop them out. So think about that as you're doing your projects, uh, just a little tip there. But that's kind of what you wanna think about. There's no real set rhyme or reason, or not rhyme or reason, but there's no specific, it's done this way every single time. Some of it's preference, some of it depends on what you're doing. Um, one example is when on your base trim, and your wood floors. Do you do the wood floors like you're staining? Do you do that first and then paint your tr base trim? Or do you paint your base trim and then stain your floors, right? You don't want stain on your base trim, but you don't want white paint on your, on your wood floors. <laughs> it's kind of a no-win thing, right? So I'm always trying to wrestle with some things like that. Um, one of them's gonna have to be taped off and really careful if you're doing all new base trim, 
what I like to do is do my wood floors, trim not there. So you pull out your existing trim, let them stain the wood floors all the way up to the wall, then put your base trim down. But again, now they have to be careful not to get white paint on your floors. But what I'll do then is I'll do a quarter round a lot of times, and that way it'll cover any little paint that might have gotten on your wood floors. You just don't want it to look bad. The last thing you want is new base trim and new stained floors, wood floors, if you're doing that, and then have paint on your base, paint on your wood floors or stain on your trim, right? That's just not gonna work. It's not gonna look good and you're brand new and it doesn't look good. So um, those are just a few things to kind of think about in your timeline as to what makes the most sense. What The number one mistake I see a lot of investors do, a lot of rehabbers do, is they paint too early. They get in there and they start painting and they got all these other things going on and then your walls are getting rubbed on and next thing you know, your brand new paint doesn't look good and you gotta come in and do a lot of touch up. Uh, paint's one of the very last things I do because paint's one of those things that is what people see the most, right? It's the paint, it's gotta look good. And I've done, I've done houses where I've had to completely repaint the house because I painted it too early. So don't make that mistake. All right, hope that was helpful. Hope you picked some nuggets out of that and that's uh, on your next rehab that's got some information there that will help you do it even better and faster. And this is Jerry Norton and I'll see you next time.